Amen. Y'all looking super good. I need to get out more. Praise God. What's up, girl? All right, all right. My God. So before I get started, I just want to thank God for just bringing me back home the journey in front of his precious, precious sheep. I want to thank God for Pastor Eric and his awesome wife, Mary Jo, and all of the leadership staff. And I mean, just hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm just ecstatic now. Um, I haven't preached in a while. So y'all are in trouble. <laughs> y'all are in trouble. I feel like I'm, I'm overflowing and I'm about to bust. So let, let me just, so what's been going on since the last time I seen you guys? Um, I put out my 10th album, my Christian rap album. Uh, it's called Throw the Crown. And um, I put out a book called The Art of God Chasing, and it's on Amazon. Uh, what else has happened? Um, I've been learning a new language. I've been learning Japanese. Amen, amen, because I went to Japan last year, fell in love with it, and I was like, I got the rap over there and all sorts of stuff, but I was like, I want to preach the gospel in Japanese, because from what I hear, it's only like under 1% of people in Japan is Christian, so I need to go there and just be like, so son, yes, that means praise God. I'm like, hey. Jesus? Yes, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So I need to just go to over there and throw down. And I've, I got like tutors. And I didn't get to tell first service this, but, you know, my, my desire is to preach over there. And funny thing about Jesus is he answers prayers, right? So one of my Japanese tutors had asked me after about four lessons, like, uh, do you rap? And I just looked at the screen like, yeah. She's like, um, can you teach me the Bible? Because you're a Christian guy. And I'm like, yes, I can. <laughs> I sure can. But God is amazing. Amen. So I have a question. Is anybody ready for the word of God today? <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for this service, God. Thank you for... My friends that I haven't seen in a while, thank you, Lord, for the people who are watching online who are not able to be here. I just pray blessings over them. Lord, I decrease, you increase. Use my tongue as the pen of a ready writer. I have supernatural recall. Holy Spirit, have your way through me. Speak through my mouth. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. Satan, you have no place, no lot in this service. We only the Holy Spirit has control. God, I don't know what your people need, but you know. I pray that you speak directly to them, to their situations. I pray that you pull somebody out today. I pray that somebody is transformed today in the name of Jesus by the power of God in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Today, we are going to discuss. This is the title of the message. I just need you to repeat it. I am not who I was. I am not who I was. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you should believe that because you have been brought with a price. Amen. Somebody came down from a heavenly throne and died for you. And when you accepted him, something inside of you happened that the world can't take away from you. Amen? So we're going to start. Anybody brought something to write with? I need to see the note takers this morning. Where are my note takers? Amen. Amen. We got way more than first service. Somebody need to pray for them. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So we are going to 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to start around verse 13. What's up, Sarah? Um. I'm going to read, so people in the back, don't kill me. I'm going to read a f from 13 to 15, then we're going to go back up. Amen. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace 
that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy. Let's go back to 13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. What type of action? Living this Christian life. We need to prepare our minds for action, for, for living according to the will of God. Because one thing I found out about learning another language is if you don't study and you don't practice, you will forget everything. I was talking to one of my tutors and I was trying to get all cute like I knew something. I was like, Cody, why? Uh, Soto de sky. And she looked at me, she said, what you ask me? I said, uh, I asked you, is that your pen? She's like, uh-uh, pen is pen. I was like, oh, okay, okay. But when I thought about it, I was like, that's right, God, sin is sin. The pen is pen, but sin is sin. And we got to prepare our mind to know what is sin in our life. And we got to stop denying it. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. Good, good, good. I got you. I got you right where I want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do we prepare our minds for this action of this Christian life? One, we got to be conscious of the fact that God is with us. Some of us don't operate as Christians because we forget God is with us. Some of us don't, don't go into work and have conversations that we need to be having because we forget that God is with us. We need to remember that God is with us on Blandon Boulevard. We need to remember that God is with us while we rolling on Collins by Costco. Because everybody want to cuss by Costco. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. I'm like, them hot dogs ain't that good for you to be acting like this now. Now, somebody need to make a turn. You got to be conscious of the fact that God is with us. Next, we need to read and meditate on God's word. We'll meditate on everybody else. We'll meditate on Facebook. My God, hallelujah, some of us got a Facebook addiction problem. If we would read our Bible like we do Facebook, this whole world would change. You need to give yourself spiritual homework. What are you talking about, Pastor Brinson? I'm glad you asked. You need to find out if this word work at home. You need to take this word and work it in your house because we know the hardest people to convince that you change is the ones that live with you. Because they like, oh, you're a Christian today? Mm. <laughs> you was on keto last week. What else you got? <laughs> oh, you was meditating in the shower. Okay, what else? What else you going to try? Oh, oh, now you're a couponer. They like every other week you change. No, 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 no. <laughs> you need to find out if this work home. You need to practice. I know, I, know, I know it's hard to hear you need to practice being a Christian, but some of us need to practice being a Christian. You need to practice. Stop lying. I mean, <coughs> did I say that? You need to practice from being a gossiper in your house. Oh, my God. This is for somebody because I didn't have to say this in first service. You need to practice hanging up on Billy when he say I want to come over there late night. Billy, you know his name. I'm just called, I'm just saying Billy to protect the innocent. You know what I'm talking about. You need to practice reading the word. You need to practice forgiveness. Oh Lord, have mercy. Because we know we've been mad with everybody all year. Oh, y'all don't want to say nothing. Okay, okay. You know, you know, the mirror told you who it was. It's you. Number three, stay in communication with God. How can I be Christ-like and I'm not talking to Christ? 
How can I be Christ-like in, in, in my conversation with Christ? The Bible says the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. I need to be led by God's spirit in everything that I do because sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I don't want to act right. Sometimes I don't want to get up and pray. Oh, y'all, oh, oh, y'all faithful prayers. Oh, oh, it's just me. Okay, we'll talk about me. It's fine. Sometimes I don't want to act like I care about what people are talking about. I'm going to tell the truth up in here. Because we in church, we in God, I ain't going to lie in God's house. Sometimes I don't want to be who I say I am. But you know what? God changed me. He died for me. And I'm not going to make a mockery of his name. I'm not who I was. You're not who you was. We can't be who we used to be. Let's get back in this word. I'm getting too, getting too happy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Preparing your minds for action. In being so Minded. I can't sip on what I used to sip on. On the rocks. I can't mix it with Coke and turn it around. I, I got to be sober minded. But I'm not just talking about beverages. Sin is intoxicating. Who, who in here ever been drunk before? Lift your hands up high. We in church now, don't lie. Now, you remember when you was drunk and you did stuff and you wanted to stop. You just couldn't stop. You was like, I'm here now. <laughs> I'm here. It's the same thing with sin. Because if we, if we really be truthful, sin feels so good. It feels so good. Because, you know, when that, that phone started buzzing, 2 a.m., mm, mm, and you, one eye open, and you look at it, you up, you like, <laughs> heart emoji, heart emoji, heart emoji, what you doing? No, no, here they go, what you wearing? You better respond and say the full armor of God. Sin is intoxicating. It'll have you out there, way out there. And you're like, how did I get out here with, who is this? The Bible says you got to be sober-minded. If I was thinking about Christ, I wouldn't be out here with Billy. I wouldn't be out here with the girls at Neptune Beach, dropping it like it was hot. I'm not who I used to be. I, I, okay, 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 okay. That's why it's so easy for us to say I'm saved and still do dirt in the dark because it's intoxicating. It's sin to control us. And we can't be the light of the world because sin got a grip on us and you got to remember you're not the same. Let's go to 14. 14 says, as obedient children. How many of y'all got obedient children in here? I ain't see a hand go up in first service. How many of y'all got disobedient children? Pastor Eric, look at these hands. Now we got to pray for everybody working in youth. Now since you know where a disobedient child is. Think about how God looking at you when you disobey. He like, I didn't die for this person and they out here acting like a monkey. Be as obedient children. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. It said conform. When I looked up conform, it said to comply with rules, standards, laws, behave accordingly to socially acceptable conventions or standards. That's what's wrong, church. It's not just that we got a sin problem. We got a blend problem. We always trying to blend in. 
And you can't blend in. Because if they didn't accept Jesus, they'll never accept you. You might as well be comfortable in your role of being different, being the light of the world, being able to tell people how it is in love and letting God use you in front of them so they can ask you, whatever you got, I want that. Then it says the conformance to agree. My God, I can't agree with my old self. He was crazy. Now, some of y'all used to be crazy, too. Some of y'all still is. Now, you, you, you got this perfectly wonderful woman at home, and she looks so good to you to the eyes, and everybody say, man, you are so blessed to have her, but as soon as she opened her mouth, you like, my God, she crazy. <laughs> and now just think about that. Everybody be like, oh, yeah, she a Christian, she a Christian, he a Christian, he a Christian. But as soon as you open your mouth, they're like, mm, no. Because every time I see her on the street and she cut somebody off and start throwing gang signs out the window, I don't know. I can't agree with what I used to agree with. I can't use my worldly logic in my relationship now because I believe God. I can't use the same logic on, on, on in my relationships, how I used to be in the streets. Somebody make you mad and you on a date, you'll kick them out wherever you at. You can't do that now. Because your wife will call her brother on you, your people. She take half of whatever you got and it's over. You need to practice being like Jesus in everything that you do. Amen. Everything, everything, everything. Okay, let me, let me slow down. I'm getting too happy. Romans 12 and 2, if you're writing notes, Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't agree with this world. But be transformed by the is it on? By the renewal of your mind, be transformed by the what of your mind? Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you. When Jesus saved you, he saved your spirit. He didn't save your mind. And he didn't save your will and your emotions. That's why the Bible says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You have to daily convince this mind to think like Jesus, to act like Jesus, to, to, to gird and guide your emotions towards Jesus. We got to remember how to forgive because God, listen, listen, listen. We want, we want all the grace when we mess up because we be messing up. But when somebody mess up on us, we don't want to give nobody no grace. And God is like, you need to do what I do. If I forgive you for the stuff, if, listen, if God uncovered some of the stuff that we've done, we would move cities. Or maybe that's just me. Nobody else, just me. I just got enough dirt like that. Okay, well, thank God for salvation. Amen. It says, uh-oh, that by testing, by testing, you may discern I need to test this word in my life. I need to test this word that you will discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. All your conversations. Are you testing it to see if this is in the will of God, good, acceptable, and perfect? The way that you treat people, is it good, acceptable, and perfect in the will of God? You the one said you're a Christian. You the one said God is the head of your life. You need to renew your mind every day. That's why the Bible said we need daily bread. I need to renew my mind every day because sometimes when somebody says something to me on the phone, I don't want to hear, I might want to go off. I'm the only person that want to go off on people. I might want to go off. I might want to do a block party. I might want to go on Facebook and put all your business on blast because I think you crazy. But something on the inside of me. That's discerning the perfect will of God. And what we need to do when we read, when we meditate, we need to develop that discerner like God. Help me to be like you even more. Because I don't know how to 
maneuver this situation because you know you know you know married people don't don't look at your spouse just look at me when I say this <laughs> some of the people we with love drama they love the fuss they get empowered and you be like my god you just got out of church how did you turn into a demon <laughs> just look at me <laughs> if she looking at you look this way We need to be more like Jesus. It says, as obedient children, we go back to 1 Peter, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Philippians 2 and 5 says this, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. King James says it like this. I like the King James. I like the, the LeBron James translation. It says, let this mind be in you which also in Christ, I need to have the, sometimes we just need to wake up and just say, God, I need, I need you to help me think today because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm about to slap the cat and kick the dog. God help me now. Am I the only one that be waking up like that? I'm about to slap something. Back to first Peter. But and we're in verse 15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in 25% of your conduct. No? Okay. You also be holy in some of your conduct. No, I got, I got it. I got it. You also be holy in church only. Nope. When I looked up that Hebrew word holy, it means to be set apart for the service of God. He said, you be set apart for the service of God. I am not who I was because then I wasn't set apart. I wasn't trying to blend in so people could like me. Only person I'm concerned with who liked me already didn't die for me. So I'm trying to be here for his service. I came this morning to remind somebody that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I came here this morning to remind somebody you were brought with a price. I came here to remind you you are not the same and you need to live how God wants you to live. You are the light of the world. You are the answered prayer. Let me break that down for you. Somebody out in this world is praying for somebody like you in their life so you can come and set their life right. But your mind got to be ready for action. Your mind need to be renewed. You need to be praying. You need to be fasting like Jesus fast. You need to be laying hands at home to see if this thing work. Like, oh, 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 the dog's sick in the name of Jesus. Roo, roo, roo. <laughs> Look, I know it's funny, but one of my homeboys said he laid his hands on his dog and the dog got up. I said, listen, you better use that faith to move a mountain from somewhere. You just need a little mustard seed. Somebody better believe the word of God this morning that you are not the same and the world needs you. I ain't say journey church. I said the world needs you. Because you're going to reach people past there that can't reach. But what you got to do is take the word that he has given you and go out in this world. Listen, 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 listen. Let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Let me slow down. We cannot make a mockery out of God's name. Amen. The church got bad PR as it is. Aren't you tired of seeing fake Christians? Let me tell you something. Don't let no media outlet be your pastor. Pastor, you, you stand up for a second. He don't look like Wolf Blitzer to me. That's your pastor. You let that man pastor you. If God sent you to this church, that's your pastor. Listen, sometimes you need to cut that hell of vision off. Oh, my God, I sound Pentecostal this morning. You need to cut that hell of vision off, get on your knees, and ask God to make his kingdom come. 
I know people like 2020 been so bad. Everything happened. I had people die too, but you know what? God got me here for such a time as this to proclaim his name. He got you here for such a time as this to be an answered prayer, to proclaim his name, to let somebody know if God can pull me out, he can pull you out. Listen, Jesus is about to come and it ain't no time to play. Because when that sky cry, y'all think it's bad now, huh? Well, anybody ever read Revelations? Revelations ain't a game. This thing is real. We out here playing. We out here playing like we got all the time in the world. No, baby. Jesus got that white horse up there saddling that boy up. Like, I'm about to go get my babies. He said he coming back for a church. Without spot or wrinkle. You better listen, 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 listen. It's time to get your house in order. Come on, somebody. It's time to let somebody know that Jesus is coming back. Listen, I know, I know. Well, well, what if, what if they left wing? What if they right wing? Baby, it's the same bird, and Jesus still God. You better put your trust in Jesus. they like, don't come up here talking politics. Bump politics. Politics ain't going to save me better put your trust in God. You better agree with what the words say. You better agree with, the, with, with love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you're, listen, listen, ain't nobody getting into heaven without loving their neighbor. I want to see all y'all. Because listen, when you get in heaven and you see that convertible mansion, you know who on that is? The roof come off. Because I want God to hear me when I shout, Hallelujah! Being there doing cartwheels. You are not who you used to be. You are not who you used to be. And we, church, we got to remember who we are. And this is the last scripture. This is the last scripture. 1 Peter 1, 22. Listen to this. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brother, brotherly love. This is my favorite part. One love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God, having purified your souls of your obedience. See, it is, when you obey God, a change got to come. That's right. A change got to come. When, I, when I'm meditating on the word, my mind can't think the same because God going to renew me. And I'm saying this during the church. It's no time to play. This is the time to shine. The world is going to get worse. But you, being holy, set apart for the work of God, for God's service, let God use you. Because you don't know what's coming, but we know something is coming. But you be in place for God to use you. Because that's what it's all about. It's about souls, right? It's about bringing somebody in because you never know. The more that you love people and reach out, the more people come into the kingdom. People don't come to this church because of, of the great choir and the preaching. A lot of people come to church for that. But when they come to this church, they feel the love of God, and that's why they stay. And you tell people, you better come to my church. It's loving. It's loving, and that's what people need. People want to be loved. People want to be wanted. People want to be heard. Let God give you understanding so you can discern the good the perfect, the acceptable will of God. Amen, you are not the same. Let's rise to our feet, amen, amen, amen. I wish I had another hour. My, my God, let me, let me get, Pastor E, let me get three hours. I need, let me just run a mini revival. I need to run around the church once. You know what I'm saying? I usually do an altar call, but 
I just felt compelled in my spirit when I was praying about this service. I just felt the Lord just give me that verse of, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. So today, we are just going to, together as a congregation, we are going to humble our hearts before the almighty God. We're going to repent to God, and we're going to ask God that he help us be set apart, that we can have a mind to despise sin, a mind to reject our old ways, a mind to reject the old things that we were accustomed to and embrace the good, perfect, acceptable will of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this time at Journey Church, God. Thank you for your precious sheep. So, God, right now, Lord, we repent for every sin, knowing and unknowing. God, we repent for the things that doesn't please you, the way we've treated people, the way that we've, 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 We've just moved that wasn't your will, even the stuff that we don't know that was wrong. We repent, God. We humble our hearts, God, and we just pray that you wash us in the precious blood of Jesus. Wash us in Jesus Christ's blood, Lord, that he shed 2,000 years ago on Calvary. Help us, Lord. Renew our mind. Help us, Lord. To just be the light of the world. Help us to be the answer of prayer. Lord, I come against every satanic work that comes against your people in this place. I come against Satan himself and plead the blood of Jesus against him that tries to bring your people back to their vomit, to their old ways, to their sin. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. God, you said if we humble ourselves and pray to you, you will heal our land. So, God, we just pray for healing. God, I pray for the people on the live stream service, God. I pray for the ones, Lord, who wanted to come but couldn't come. God, I just pray, Lord, help us be your instruments that when we open our mouths, when we live our lives in front of people, that people will see the goodness and glorify you. And, God, we thank you for this time. Let us, let us rest in your presence. God, we come against depression now. We come against anxiety now. Yes. God, we come against the things that the enemy has used for so long to keep us captive in sin. We pray liberty now in the name of Jesus. Your kingdom come in us. Yes. Your kingdom come in our house, in our families. In this church, in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout glory in this place. Give God a shout in this place. Somebody shout glory in this place. Let's lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Some of y'all ain't prayed and praised in a long time. Lift up your voice and give God a shout. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.